there how's it going so this is going to be a video about uh, working with the spark ui in the previous video we went through um the spark ui introduction we touched on persist so in this video we are going to deep dive more into persist and see how repetition works as well so I'm still going to be using the same uh, data. So this is the uh, organization data frame that I'm working with. So um, now I've read this data frame. And if you check the UI, we have the Spark UI here. And then you can see in the storage, there is nothing there. So what I'm going to do is persist this data frame. So if I persist it, and instead of calling show here, I want to call count. So that will, this will make sure that the data frame is persisted into the memory. Okay, first of all, let me persist it. Okay, let me to the UI. CV. Okay, so you can see here we call counts action, and if we go to the storage now, we can see that our data frame has been persisted. So uh, you can see the RDD name here, and the catch partition is one. So we cutting this partition. Um, we can check how many processor we have in our um, executor, right? in our host. Currently, I'm using my local system, so I can, I can check how many processor I've got in my local system. So what you, you do is basically import this get runtime from Java uh, runtime, right? So once you do that, uh, let's define the processor here. If you to now, you can see get runtime dot available processors. So basically, um, it will return the available processor in my local system. If you are working with a um cluster, if you are using cluster mode. For example, if we are working on database, right, you can basically, you are going to have different number of uh, executors, right? Maybe eight executors or 10 executors, right? So you basically need to multiply the available processor by the number of executors. And how you can do that is basically multiply this available processor by spark session dot spark context dot status tracker so you get the status tracker here then dot um you're going to get the uh, executor info so you get executor info and what happened in database is basically um when you are the, the driver will not be used um you want basically want to supply the driver from the uh, uh, number of executor you have. So we say get executor info minus one. So this will return the total number of calls in your cluster minus the driver calls, right? So this is how you do that. But well, I'm not working on local mode right now, so I don't need this bit. So you can print the number of a uh, processor here, my processor. So, and um, the reason I need processor is basically, I want to partition this data frame based, based on the number of processor I have, or you can say the number of calls. So I want the data frame to be distributed across all the, um, processor so i will say the number of partition equal to the number of processor so as a repartition the number of a processor 
Now, if I run this code again, so you can see now the number of processors is eight, right? So if we go to the Spark UI now, the data frames should have been distributed across all the partitions, which is eight. So now let's go to the storage. You see here it says hashed partitions is eight. So if I go into this RDD, right? You see the host is still our, uh, is still my local system, right? And you can see there are two, two of number of a partitions, right? In which this uh, uh, data frame is distributed. So you can see they are basically almost uh, evenly distributed, right? So the, this one has got four, which one kilobyte, this one has got 4.1 kilobyte, and uh, most of them has got 3.8 kilobytes. So when you repartition the data, the, the, there's going to be full suffering of data across all the partitions, right? The, this is an expensive operation, right? So when, when you try thinking of applying repartition, you need to basically make sure that um the reason for applying partition, you know, the use case is better than not applying it at all. So you need to think of either you should apply it or not, right? So now if I go back and if I go to the job, go to this one, this is where we call it come. So so if I go to this one here and uh so here you can see the locality level is not local or it, it's better if you use process local in terms of uh, formats of your application because the not local is is not as uh, if you use process local it's, it's better than using local right so that that is where your when when your spark application is running it needs to fetch the data from place where, where the data is closer you know so not the process local is closer than uh, the node local so um you can set up set it up in your spark configuration if you if you want to so apart from that, so we've covered the repartition, we've covered the process. So and another thing is uh, you can, so if you go back here, you click this one, you can check the associated SQL query and you can go to the um, SQL query uh, with ID1. You can see this is taking 0 0.8 second. So um, if you are doing some performance tuning on your code, you need to check whether using persist and partition is better for your application or not. So if the duration is higher than not applying persist at all, so it's better you don't apply persist. So now let's say I have and I need to create a new data frame called DF2. So in this one I was going to say DF1 select. Um so I'm going to so what I want to do basically is partition this data frame based on the uh Founded uh, dates and uh, use a rule number over that founded date. So this is this is what I'm trying to do. So it's about when one equals window. So you import window from SQL expressions. So it's a partition by. So you provide the colon name which is founded. And we order it by, I want to order it by the 
same colonel founded and then so i'll say select all the data frame columns right say so say call yeah, white card asterisk then you say row number dot over the wing one which is the window right so now name this one as now let's say df2 accounts so you see what i did i'm going to display this data frame so i'll say df2 show false okay so this is the data frame now if we go to the last column you see we have row number c so we've partitioned the data frame by founded so there are two uh record for 987 so it's basically um applied the row number uh on top of that uh, founded date and so it, it starts from the first one um as one and the second one as two also for for 2012 so you have 2012 uh occurring one two three four five five times so you will start from the first one one two three four five and the same for the rest of the uh, founded dates so that's what i try to do there now if we go back to the spark ui you see how long this is taking Okay, so we have a show at uh, line number 18 and we have a count at line number 17. So if we go to the first one and if we check the associated query, which is three, so three, two, two, in total, all is taking one second right and the the first the one at the count at line number 17 is taking 0 0.1 second right but now if we don't pass it here at all right let's see what is going to be the, the change depends on the, the size of your data right if you are working with uh, uh, megabytes of data compared to working with uh, 10 gigabytes of data. So the process may be, I mean, the, the performance or the duration may be different. Yeah, of course, there are going to be the diff difference, but you need to see which one, which method is, is better for your application. So if we go to the, the last one, the first, first one here, which is July the 6th. So this is, one. so this is taking one second again. This is taking like 98 seconds. I think it reduce this one is less or something. Anyway, almost the same time, I think, but it may be different if you're working with a bigger a bigger size of data. So yeah, that is, that is just about, about it. Um, so you can see the difference between persisting and non-persisting data. And you can see when you persist your data frame, it comes into the storage area. Right, so basically, uh, if you go to the executor page, and um, you will see the total storage size, right? Um, the, the total storage memory is uh, 1.9 gigabytes. So the 1.9 gigabyte is basically the 50% of the Spark memory, and uh, 
the spark memory is basically 75% of the on heap memory, right? So the spark memory, uh, if you say 1.9 gigabyte, which is 50% of the uh, spark memory, so that's about two gigabyte, right? So the total spark memory would be about uh, four gigabyte. And if you say 0.25% of four gigabyte, that will give you about one gigabyte. So the total on chip memory for this application is five gigabytes. So basically that's how you can calculate your uh, spark memory the, and the execution memory and the um, uh, storage memory as well. Yep, yeah. that is it for this video. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to hit the like button, the subscribe button, and leave a comment. Have a lovely day. Goodbye.